Coming up on today's Airborne, first production Honda Jet takes to the skies. Dates are set for AirVenture Job Fair and College Social. And Obama nominates Hart as NTSB Chair. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Honda Aircraft Company announced that the first production Honda Jet achieved its initial flight marking another milestone towards aircraft certification and entry into service in 2015. During the 84-minute flight, the aircraft climbed to 15,500 feet and reached a top speed of 348 knots true airspeed. The flight crew completed several checks during the flight, including low and high-speed handling characteristics, avionics, and system functionality, including the landing gear, flaps, and speed brake operations. Aircraft production continues at steady pace and advance of entry into service. This steady buildup supports the company's objective to have aircraft ready for delivery immediately after FAA type certification is achieved. Are you looking for a job in aviation? If so, EAA Air Venture may be the place to start looking. Online registration is now available for the third annual EAA College Social. That, along with the second annual EAA Job Fair, will provide event attendees opportunities to leave AirVenture with more than just a souvenir. More than 20 aviation companies, airlines, and colleges will be represented at the EAA Job Fair in College Park on Wednesday, July 30th, from 12 to 3 p.m. It will include resume reviews from members of the 99's Women's Aviation Organization. Many employers actively recruit during AirVenture, so business cards and resumes are highly encouraged. On Friday, August 1st, from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m., attendees may meet with 30 aviation companies and schools to learn about career paths and educational opportunities at the EAA College Social. It will be held in the College Park Quad area. Online pre-registration for this event is required. The College Park area at EAA Air Venture is located across from the airport control tower on the corner of Waqua Avenue and Knapp Street. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States. But you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer, get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. President Obama has nominated pilot Chris Hart to chair the NTSB. Hart is a licensed pilot with commercial, multi-engine, and instrument ratings. His current assignment to the NTSB began in 2009, but he first served with the board from 1990 to 1993. In a new press release, NBAA President and CEO Ed Bolin said in part, quote, NBAA commends the president for nominating Chris Hart as NTSB chair. He has held several government positions focused on transportation, and we know from our work with him that he understands the importance of general aviation to America's transportation system and its economy. We congratulate Chris on this nomination, and we look forward to continuing to work with him in the years to come." End quote. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Left until you pull. Final lift off.
As I was climbing away from the deck, I uh, put my gear up, realized I had a gear malfunction, so I immediately pulled the power back, slowed the aircraft down so I wouldn't overspeed the landing gear. A Marine pilot has to land his Harrier jet aboard a ship with the front main landing gear failed in the up position. This is the whole story, not just the clip you may have seen on news programs. Search AV-8B No Gear Landing on YouTube. With Air Venture 2014 fast approaching, iFlight Planner has announced a few new features and enhancements that will be on display at the show. iFlight Planner Premium members now have the ability to import GPX flight plan files into iFlight Planner. This new functionality complements the feature of being able to save routes planned on iFlight Planner to the GPX and Garmin FPL flight plan file formats for use in compatible avionics packages. Also recently upgraded is the behind the scenes processing of temporary flight restrictions from the FAA website for all map views available on iFlightPlanner.com and iFlight Planner for the iPad. Airborne is brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing and crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. We recently reported the story on Airborne about a young man who was assaulted by a woman who accused him of invading her privacy on a public beach by flying a quadcopter with a video camera in her vicinity. The squabble between the two was video recorded and was put on YouTube. Well, here's an update. The woman was charged with third degree assault and it's reported that she has applied for an accelerated rehabilitation program, which allows training courses to replace a criminal conviction. Lessons learned. Invading someone's personal space with a camera-equipped UAV may not be illegal, but it is insensitive and intrusive, and it could result in regulations imposing limits on UAV use. With a little common sense on the part of both parties, this incident could have been avoided altogether. A pilot whose airplane went down in a Glendale, California neighborhood will have to reimburse the city $20,000 for property damage and emergency services in a case stemming from the 2012 accident. There are some unanswered questions in this story, but we'll tell you what we know. The pilot was on a flight from Phoenix, Arizona to Van Nuys, California, when engine problems forced him to divert to John Wayne Airport in Burbank, California. He didn't make it and ended up making a forced landing in the city of Glendale. The city of Glendale asked to be reimbursed for $92,000 for property damage and emergency services. According to the report, they have now reduced the amount to $20,000. It was reported that the pilot had originally asked his insurance company to help with the damages, but they declined due to a technical issue. The final NTSB report has not been issued and the pilot was unavailable for comment. But if you have to make an emergency landing, we recommend you avoid Glendale or it'll cost you. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And by the way, there are only 28 more days to Oshkosh and ANN will be there to bring you the most comprehensive coverage in the business. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.